Jesse T writes, my question is about movies you've changed your mind about. Mm. I thought the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford was boring and pointless the first time I watched it, but now I really love it. I was wondering what movie has your opinion changed about the most since you first watched it? I love the example you bring up of the assassination of Jesse James. I think a lot of people, if, if you paid attention to the marketing, you shouldn't have been confused. But I think a lot of people, when they, Western, shoot him up. Yeah, that's the <laughs> And it's not, but it is a brilliant movie. Actually, I got a really good friend of mine, uh, the uh, the awards guy, coverage coverage guy for Variety magazines, Chris Tapley, friend of the show, whatever. Uh, I know that is like one of his all time favorite films. You go into his place, and he's got this giant, uh, the assassination of Jesse James by the a coward Robert Ford poster hanging on so that he got this really great framing job done on. Brilliant film. Here's the two for me. I'm going to go one each way. Movie I hated at first, realized that I loved it. Movie that I thought I loved at first, realized I hated it. You've heard me say both of these. The movie that I loved and my first experience and then realized I was fooling myself was The Phantom Menace. Um, and actually, all the all of the prequel films. At first, I, I lied to myself. Oh, I like this. Um, so I walked in and I walked out of the first time because I was so desperate for Star Wars. I'm like, yeah, that was awesome. And all I would talk about is the lightsaber duel at the end and uh, the pod race. And you know, as much everybody knows how much I hate the prequels, just hate them. <laughs> I will defend to the death three things in the prequels: that lightsaber fight between Obi Wan and uh, and Darth Maul. A lot of people say I know Christian sometimes feels it's like, too orchestrated, it's too smooth. To me. It shows the elegance of the Jedi and stuff like that. I really love that fight, and I love the pod racing scene. One of the best full marks to Ben Burt, one of the best uses of sound design in any scene in Hollywood history, I think, is that pod race scene. And then and lightsaber fighting Yoda. I know a lot of people hated that, and I hate the movies, <laughs> but I will defend lightsaber fighting Yoda. I thought that was badass. But... It was, for me, it was one of those things where I just realized after seeing it like the 16th, 17th, and 18th time, because I was also working in visual effects at the time, so I was going to see it like every day, <laughs> I realized this movie really is a sack of crap. I mean, this is awful. Anyway, so there's that one. Going the other way, Inglorious Bastards. I, I don't know what was wrong with me the day that I saw it, but I came out of watching that movie thinking, that movie sucked. What's everybody talking about? Like, I was completely befuddled. I couldn't understand why anybody liked this movie. And then I had this girl over that I really wanted to score with, and she wanted to watch it. So I was like, okay, okay sure, yeah, let's put it in Glorious Bastards, whatever. And I watched it again. I'm like, what was I thinking? This movie's awesome. And the movie was is really great. Nothing so, says sexy time like beating a Jewish man with a baseball bat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, it's it's just, that's the way. So the, yeah, the movie I thought I liked at first, realized I hated it, was Phantom Menace. Movie I thought I hated first and then ended up really loving it for me is Inglorious Bastards. What about you, Josh? Uh, I'm going to, I'm kind of, kind of stick with it in a Quentin Tarantino form. Uh, and I know I get a lot of hate, but Reservoir Dogs, the first time I saw it, I didn't love it. I thought it was really slow and I was just kind of like, but maybe I was kind of young, so I didn't get it. But then as I watch it as an adult over and over again, it's absolutely fantastic. And I think in the same realm, and I know I'll get a ton of hate for this one, but first time I saw Big Lebowski, I was like, I don't get it. I don't get this. And then the, the next eight times I watched it, I was like, okay, <laughs> I get it. Because everybody that I was friends with was like, dude, Big Lebowski's the greatest movie ever. And so I just kept watching it like, okay, okay, okay. Oh, oh. And you you notice the nuances in directors like that kind of And that of movie's movies. all nuance. Oh, I mean, yeah. It really it, is. It's all dialogue. It's both of those movies, obviously Tarantino, but all those movies, it's just catching the, the correct dialogue and seeing where the story goes, how simplistic it is, and yet complex. That's hilarious because I was kind of the same way with Lebowski too because all yeah. my college buddies loved it and I was I watched it and I was like, yeah, this is this is fine, whatever. Then every time you watch it, you just slowly pick up more and yeah, it just yeah. gets better and better. A movie that I did love and then I ended up hating um, is it, it's a harder double one for impact. me because Double Impact I will love until the day Time I cop. die. I mean, look, look the easy, it, it's a lot easier to go for, like, if you look at it, in my movie reviewing career, I saw Mirror Mirror and was pretty happy with it. Like, I didn't love it, but I was like, that's a damn good fantasy movie. I haven't revisited it since. Same thing uh -huh. with Sucker Punch, is that I loved it when I saw it because I love Led Zeppelin and I love hot chicks beating the crap out of people. And I haven't revisited it since, and everybody tells me I need to see it again because it's just not that good of a movie. That was one of the reasons that and the Al movie were why I was so excited that Zack Snyder was going to be doing Man of Steel. Yeah. So I need to revisit Sucker Punch, and I admit that. Now, the movie that I didn't like at all when I first saw it that I now love, South Park. Bigger, oh, longer, oh, and uncut. Wow. Me and my yeah. brother went to go see that, and we missed the initial train. And if you miss a comedy opening weekend or the first couple weekends, it's a different 
experience you get in a theater. It was just me and my brother <laughs> and one other weirdo sitting way up front. <laughs> And it was just we. It was I, I. thought it was too musical. I thought that it, well, there was a song every five minutes. I'm like, I don't want another damn song. But now when I put it on, I appreciate those songs for the incredible pieces of comedy that they are. And that movie as a whole yeah. is just fall down funny. And you know, Campia hates that because blame Canada. Oh my! <laughs> they, they do so much great. They, three great things to South Park is done with Canadians. Number one is the movie, the yeah. blame Canada. That thing is great. The other one was that episode they did. Remember six, seven years ago when the writer strike was going on. On. And the guys at South Park made an analogy of the writers and the writer strike to Canada going on strike because Canada wanted more internet money, <laughs> which was exactly the issue at the Writers Guild. And th hence came the song Canada on Strike, right. um, which was great. And then the third thing they did, which was just last season, I think. They did an episode about freemium mobile gaming. Mm -hmm. Those games that are free to download, but if you actually really want to get anywhere, you have to start spending money. I spent over $200 on Simpsons Tapped Out, a free <laughs> game. So they did a whole episode on what like bullcrap like freemium gaming is, and it turns out that it was being perpetrated by like the Canadian devil. Um, it so was the funny. Canadian devil. And then the, then the, the real Satan had to come and have an <laughs> argument with him. It was... Just gold stuff. I love the way they do the Canadian yeah. well, Look, they've already apologized for Brian Adams on multiple occasions. <laughs> I actually did, like Brian Adams. Did you ever see that there was a piece of fan art? This is going back about a year and a half ago when we were still with AMC. But some fan did that fan art of all the Movie Talk crew as... Canadians from South Park. Yes. Do you remember that picture? Yes. It was brilliant. Yeah, it somebody so tweet funny. that to us. I because I'm just too lazy to go research it. But yeah, it was hysterical. I just love the fact that they make Canadians like look different, like their their mouths move different yeah. than well, Americans. Yeah, the top it's of the bottoms so of their funny. heads are disconnected and stuff like that. Oh, so, <laughs> so good. true.